Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Thanks for joining me in the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. This is part two of the AutoML series that I just started that is going to reintroduce you to AutoML and step you through some of the capabilities as well as the process you need to create a predictive ClickSense app. The previous video showed you how to create the predictive model. This example is going to show you how to create a ClickSense app with just the prediction data only. And then the next video will add the explainability data. And then subsequent videos are going to go into showing you some what if analysis and further explanation of the Click Auto ML experiment. So let's just jump right into this. I'm really excited to show you how this works. I do want to show you that we have the ability to really create a beautifully styled example. This is our prediction dashboard that also introduces the explainability data. This is the completed cake, if you will, just took it out of the oven. I'm going to walk you through actually going through the ingredients to create the cake from start to finish. But just to give you a completed example with AutoML, we're using that data that I showed you in the first video to create a dashboard to help predict late deliveries. And there are a number of different features or factors such as transport partners, weather severity, as well as product demand, stock information, etc. that would factor into what would predict a delivery to be late or not. But we'll go into that slowly as I continue with this series. Now, let's jump back to a quick example of what we're going to create. And this example is just going to use the prediction data set and I will show you those steps momentarily. But basically we just have the number of orders. We have the number of orders that are predicted to be late as well as the percentage of that compared to all of the orders. The number of orders that are not predicted to be late as well as predicted late orders by transport partner, predicted late orders percentage by transport partner, and as well as some additional information to show you what the model comprises of such as the probability values for no and yes, as well as the value yes or no. And then also for an example, all of the orders by the inventory on hand, showing you which orders are predicted to ship late by using the average probability. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new app for this. So I'm just going to go into home. So we'll go to our catalog and we're going to go to create and we're going to create a new analytics app and I'll call this one auto ML late deliveries. I'll just put number two on it. Click create. And as you know, you can select data from the catalog or other files and sources. In this example, I'm going to use the apply data set just because that's what I have available and that's my current data. So to make things easier, we're just going to go to the space. And if you remember, we created the prediction data set, and that is this one right here in the form of CSV. So that's the one we're going to use. Okay. Now we're going to link this data set with my current data the data that does not have any of the predictions on it. The way I call it is the operational data, the current data set that we're running for our analysis. So in this case, for me, it's the apply data set. I did mention SHAP data or the explainability data. Again, I will cover that in the next video. So we select these two data sets, load into the app. And if you remember also in the first video, I showed you the index field was called order ID. That's how it knows to link these two data sets together. And you can see we automatically recognize that order ID is a common field in between these two data sets. So we're just going to apply that and then load the data. That's basically it. At this point, it becomes a regular ClickSense app that you all know and love. And you just need a couple of tips on how to create those predictive outputs. And then we can worry about explainability and what if and all that in a subsequent video. But right now we're just going to go directly to the sheet. We're going to create some new analytics 
and we're just going to explore the fields real quick. So you can see we have the apply data, which is our current data, has all of our fields, right? Our order dates, our prices, our dimensions, our who, what, where, and when, our measures, etc. And then we have the prediction. And you can see the prediction is nothing more than the order ID, a probability value or measure for shipped late no, a probability value for shipped late yes, and then a dimension that has yes and no. If you remember, we ran a binary classification, right? Looking at two values, yes and no. That's it. And at this point, what you can do is start creating your analytics. So I already have one created here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to my space. And in my catalog, I have the app here called late deliveries predicted. And we'll create the new sheets. I'm just going to show you the sheets that I created. It's the one I showed you earlier. Okay. So we have our order count KPI, which is just count of order ID. We have our predicted late. Yes, which is actually just a count of order ID using a set analysis on ship late predicted equals yes. And then the same for predicted late. No. And then we're using the probability column shipped late. Yes. With an average to just get a percentage. And we're looking at that information by transport partner. So immediately by looking at this, we can see that we have 177 orders that are predicted to be late 15.19%. 988 of the 1,000.17 K orders are not predicted to be late or 84%. We can see that the quantum cargo transport partner has a high percentage or a high number of orders that are predicted to be late. And then if we look at predicted late order by correlation of inventory on hand, we can see some outliers here, almost close to 50% related to these particular orders are predicted to be late. Okay. And if we choose, for example, transport partner, you can actually see those orders are related to that transport partner. We choose another transport partner. You can see those orders disappear in the middle. So we've already answered a big question and we already see here that transport partner in this case, quantum cargo has some influence here on why these orders are going to be late. So as I mentioned in a next subsequent video will cover some of the what if scenarios to try to reduce that percentage. Okay. So let's just go to a quick sheet and I'm just going to show you real quick, a quick creation of it should be fairly straightforward. If you're familiar with click analytics, I'm just going to grab a chart. I'm going to grab a KPI. I'm going to click add and we're going to add a measure in this case here. And I'm just going to do count of actually, I'm sorry. I'm just going to do order ID and we're going to select count. Okay. So there's our total orders. Now I'm just going to control C and control V. And now I'm going to edit the expression for count order ID. And I'm just going to go in and type in some set analysis. Okay. And I'm going to show you a little trick on this as well, but Basically what we're looking for is the shipped late predicted column, which is containing the value yes or no. So if you're familiar with set analysis, it goes in that fashion there, we click apply and there's our 177 orders that are predicted to be late. Now you could do something like grab a filter panel, or we can go into our prediction data set and we have our ship late predicted. If I hold my shift key and drag it over to the canvas, it'll create a little filter box. Now keep in mind, I'm not using any layout container or anything for styling and design. I'm just doing something very simple. Okay. And now you see we have the value yes or no. So let's just choose no. And it'll put that in our filter. This is just a little trick. Again, it is called do more with click tips and tricks. So, Let's grab this KPI, control C, control V. I'll put that right there. Now, obviously we can just edit the expression and I can type no in here, but let's say you didn't have that expression or you're not familiar with set analysis yet. You can just go to set expressions and select use current selections and click insert. And it'll put that 
selection from the value in the filter right in front. And this will restrict the order count to the values where it's equal to no. Again, I have a whole video series on set analysis. If you're looking at click auto ML, my assumption is you already know what you need to know about creating uh, click sense apps. But in case you're new to it, I'll put that link in the description for you. Okay. And there is the prediction of no. Okay. Now keep in mind, we have a filter set. When I uncheck that, you can see it remains as 988. Okay. And now let's create a quick bar chart on this and use the percentage value. So if we just want to look at this information by a particular dimension, I'm going to grab a chart. Let's grab a bar chart. Let's make the dimension transport partner. And here, what we're going to do is look at the uh, ship late predicted. Yes, actually, let's type in ship late. Yes. And we're going to take an average. And what that's doing, it's actually looking at an average of the probability that's within that column. Okay. And we can change this to a number 12%. And then we can go to, uh, sorry, percentage, not 12%, but percentage format. And then we can go into presentation, horizontal, put the values on the labels. And you can see 58% quantum cargo. Okay. So that's pretty much the gist of utilizing the fields that are in the prediction data set. Okay. At this point, we're going to end the video here. And in the next video, I'm going to add the SHAP data, which will show you the scoring of which features had the most influence when it was going through the training of the model. Okay. And we'll see you on the next video with that.